This morning, the final full week before Election Day. Sitting down with Beto O'Rourke, his plan for the remaining days. And we'll ask whether 2020 is in his sights. Plus, Faith Johnson and John Crusoe. The district attorney's race could be the closest one in Dallas County. Both candidates in studio this morning. Inside Texas Politics with Jason Whiteley starts now. Good morning. You'll notice our program looks a little different this Sunday morning. We are dedicating time to three interviews in two big races. And the first up, Congressman Beto O'Rourke. We gave his opponent Ted Cruz equal time earlier this month. Now it's Beto's turn taking questions from me and Bud Kennedy in the Star Telegram about his campaign's final week and a half. Congressman, thanks you uh, for the time. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Closing in on the final days, public polls have you down. How do you make that up now? I don't know. I, I wouldn't concede that we're down. Um, I think a lot of the people that we're seeing and visiting with and showing up for are not reflected in anyone's polls. Folks who typically don't vote in midterm election who will vote in this one. Um, students who are getting registered to vote for the first time. People who've dropped out for 20 years and are back in because everything's on the line. I feel really good about our chances and I feel really good given all these amazing volunteers all over the state, including North Texas, who are out there knocking on doors, making phone calls, uh, make, making this final pitch for our ability to decide the future of this country. But you've raised three times as much as Senator Cruz. Your rallies are significantly larger than any of his are. Why isn't that reflected in the polls? Well, I think, I think um, my contention would be that, that the polls um, may or may not be able to predict the outcomes of these political races anymore, at least maybe not in the way that they used to be. Um, I'll, I'll put my, my money where my mouth is. Uh, I haven't hired a pollster. Um, we're not putting any of these resources into doing polls. We're showing up where people are and listening to them. And so um, everyone uh, in every county um, is, is, um, is being counted on at this moment uh, to turn out for this state and this country. And that's why we've been to every one of them, listening to everybody, not discriminating based on party affiliation or any other difference. Every, everyone welcome to be part of this campaign. You'll see that at the polls on the 6th. Is there a number on turnout that you have to hit? You know, the turnout's usually 35% for midterms. What, what number will it take for you to feel like you can win? I, I don't know. I mean, there, there may be someone on our team that has, a, you know, has done a projection on, on this is what it's going to take. Um, I, I just, um, I'm going as hard as is humanly possible, as are all of our volunteers and, and block walkers, because whatever the number is, we know it's going to take everything that we've got um, going to every community and neighborhood to, to get that out. Make sure that we're connecting with everybody. Here in Dallas County, there are some races at the Texas legislature, maybe even in Congress, where those seats, we're told, may go blue because of the turnout to vote for you. If more seats go blue, but you don't win, will you be happy? I, I won't. Um, I'm, I'm in this to win this. Um, I don't want to run uh, the campaign just to run it the right way. I want to run it the right way to win. Um, and so um, all those folks who are counting on us, those teachers who are working a second job and want to be paid a living wage, um, those folks who know that we should lead on immigration that we understand better than anyone else, uh, immigration. Um, and, and, and in a state that's the least insured in the United States of America, making sure that we lead the way on guaranteed high quality health care, um, we've got to win to achieve those things. And so um, we, we, we are focused on that. Congressman, some Democrats wonder why you aren't hitting President Trump harder, why you aren't linking your opponent to him. What do you tell them? I'm reflecting the energy of the people of this state. We're, we're not organized against anybody um, or anything or another political party. We're organized for this country. We want to make sure that we're defined by our ambitions, not by who we don't like, who we're afraid of, who we want to defeat. Um, the, the big things that we want to do are only possible if we decide we're going to do them together. That's Republicans and Democrats working together. The legislation that we were able to get signed into law by President Trump that expands mental health care access for veterans couldn't do that if we just kept it to Democrats. Had to be Republicans, had to be this administration as well as Congress. So that's the way that we get things done in this country, working with anyone, anytime, anywhere, as long as it advances our priorities. Well, you, said, you said the nation needs more balance. If, if Democrats win, will you still say they need more balance? I think having um, more balance in our Congress is, is going to be helpful. Forcing consensus and compromise, I know those are dirty words in Washington, D.C. today. That's a good thing for, for our democracy. H having a, a shared interest in the outcomes and being able to give a little bit, not allowing the perfect to become the enemy of the good, um, that, that should distinguish us. Uh, and, and Texans should be able to lead the way. 
Congressman, uh, Republicans repeatedly cast you as too liberal for Texas. Are you? I mean, uh, we can pick an issue. I mean, any issue from, from education, uh, making sure that the teachers are paid a living wage, can teach to the child, not the test. Immigration, making sure dreamers can stay here or not deported. Health care, uh, making sure everyone's well enough to live to their full potential, that no longer is the county jail system in Texas the number one provider of mental health care services. I, I don't know that you can peg those on the political spectrum. Those are things that people, whether in Fort Worth, in Denton, where we just were, in Dallas, um, Republican, Democrat, Independent, they want to see us work on. And listen, if, if we start with the goals, this is what we want want to achieve and don't prescribe the specific path to get there. If we open up to everyone to sit at the table and come up with the solutions, I'm confident that we can lead. We, we, can, we can be uh, at this divided, highly polarized moment, um, the, the strength, the courage, the confidence, um, the, the willingness to work together that the country has been missing for far too long. Do you, is there anything at this point that you already wish you'd done differently? You went to all these counties, you campaigned against politics as usual instead of against your opponent. Is there anything that you would change? No, I, I, this has been um, the most amazing experience of, of my life outside of family. Um, and the people who really are this campaign, it's not the candidate, it's not the political party, it's the people of Texas, um, have, have taught me so much, have, have left me more inspired than I've ever been. Uh, and that's against some of the disappointments that we feel in this country and, and, the, and our level of division. So, um, no, I, I am I'm just honored to, to be a part of this. I uh, feel very grateful. Congressman, I know you've seen the headlines that say that uh, one of the most recent ones, Beto isn't running for Senate anymore. Uh, instead, your campaign is looking at 2020. You constantly rebuff that, but what do you tell people who wonder if you have higher aspirations? I tell them that I don't. Um, and so my, my answer is, you know, are, are you running for president? No, period. Um, no ever or no right now? Um, definitely no for the, the next six years. I, I want to serve every single day for Texas and the U.S. Senate, deliver on our priorities, make sure that we come through for the communities of North Texas and every single part of the state. You can't do that and run for the president at the same time. We saw that when Ted Cruz left the state to do that. So I'm, I'm committed to Texas. What happens if you don't win? Uh, Is 2020 it, in, your, in your sight? No. Uh, I've got an 11-year-old, a 9-year-old, uh, I'm sorry, 11-year-old and a 10-year-old and, and a 7-year-old. Uh, missed the 9-year-old's birthday um, because we were out campaigning. I, I, I want to make sure that I'm there for them going forward, that I help Amy, who's really had um, the, the real burden during this campaign, make, make sure that we, we are there for those kids. So that's, that's, that's our priority after the 6th of November. But does the Democratic Party need someone who can fundraise like you can, who can get people out? The party is lacking that. Oh, in, in a country of 320, 330 million, I'm confident there, there are a number of people uh, who will be superior candidates to anything that, that I can do. And um, yeah, looking, looking forward to that race. Other people running it, I'm not interested. Uh, I'm focused on Texas. One thing that came up in the second debate when you know, Ted Cruz talks about you wanting a $10 a barrel tax on oil, you know, Dallas, Fort Worth is a, a, a lot of oil money here. What did that mean? What was he talking about? You know, he, he was he was making something up to try to scare you and, and others who understand that oil and gas is 10 percent of our economy. But there was a vote on a resolution. There, there was a vote on a resolution and, and the resolution would have tied the president's hands as he tried to raise the necessary money to pay for our infrastructure. Now, we're an oil and gas state. We're also a trading state. Um, our farmers, our ranchers, our producers, our manufacturers are looking for markets around the world. If we don't have the roads and bridges and highways to connect that trade and what we produce to those markets, then we're going to lose the jobs that we're creating here. So all, all, all my vote said is I don't want to tie the president's hands in how he's able to raise that revenue. There was no $10 a barrel or 24 cents a gallon tax uh, being proposed. And so I think this is the kind of fear monger. In fact, th that resolution was put forward so that it could become a campaign issue uh, down the road. Um, I'm, I'm focused on solutions. I want to support the oil and gas industry, make sure that those who are working, providing the value, ensuring that we have our energy independence are supported, that we do it in as responsible a way as possible, but that we also seize on our lead as the number one state in the generation of wind power, uh, moving on up uh, number five right now, but could be number one in solar. And, and those kinds of energy jobs that not only allow us to meet our obligation to the next generation, but are the fastest growing jobs in the United States of America today. Oil, oil and gas complemented by uh, wind and solar. Good deal. Congressman O'Rourke, thank you for the time. Thank you. Really thank appreciate you. it. Thank you, thank you both.
So that's the biggest statewide race. The biggest local race, at least in Dallas County, is for district attorney. Faith Johnson and John Cruzeau both in studio when we come back. The XT5 reviews are in. Texas residents get this low mileage lease on this 2018 Cadillac XT5 from around $379 per month. Plus, Dallas-Fort Worth area residents can get an additional $1,000 toward the lease. They might ask how you did it. A holiday haul no one saw coming. When did you splurge for that? And that. You know Con's Low Payment Finder helps find the lowest payment tailored to you. Whether you have good credit to no credit. Con's Home Plus works with you to make it happen, so you can splurge on more big holiday deals with small holiday payments. You got this. There are 254 counties in Texas. I know because I've been to every single one of them. Ted Cruz, he's been to all 99 counties of Iowa, to the other states that decided the Republican presidential primary. That came at the cost of Texas, and it also meant that he wasn't showing up in the Senate. He missed a quarter of votes in 2015, half of them in 2016. I've got to ask you, if you missed half the days at work, would your boss rehire you for the same job? I'm Beto O'Rourke, and I approve this message because I'm running to represent you every single day. Brianna was diagnosed with visual and auditory processing disorder. And when she wouldn't have the success she was looking for, you could just see her kind of going into her shell. The assessment showed me that there was actually more of a struggle there than even we were aware of. Brain Balance gave Brianna the tools to succeed. She's in class, she's actually raising her hand and she's interacting. Her teachers are amazed, they're just amazed. Give your child the foundation they need to succeed in school. Call Brain Balance today. Growing your business isn't just one thing, it's a million little things. Should you rent or own? How fast can you get that part? Does it fit the budget? That's what your cap dealer is here for. With expert advice, flexible financing, and industry-leading equipment, you can get the job done day after day. Right now at Holt Cat, get 0% for 60 months on new equipment. If you were gonna design your perfect car, which three features would you choose? Safety with the kids. Fuel efficiency. Affordable price. My dream car would have all of these things. What if I told you that there was a car that did have everything? Serious? Okay. This is the Chevy Cruze. Go Chevy. Get $3,250 total cash allowance on most 2018 Cruise models. Plus, get an additional $750 cash allowance when you finance with GM Financial. Chevy drives Texas. Find new roads. Beto versus Cruz seems to consume all the attention since it's the most competitive statewide race. But the biggest local race in Dallas County, at least, is for district attorney. Not only could it be a close race, but perhaps a long night on Election Day. This morning, we're talking to both candidates individually. First up, the Democrat judge, former judge, rather, John Cruz. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Let, let's Good start morning. with uh, a couple of the basics here, too. We've seen a lot of the uh, attack ads your opponent is running against you on TV, saying that you lost track of 5,000 felons when you presided over the probation department. Right. I don't recollect you presiding over that, but uh, how would you respond to this ad? Well, there's no such thing as my presiding over the probation department. The basis of this ad is a uh, Dallas Morning News article. Let me just read it to you. Uh, we were talking about absconders. And in 2005, when Faith Johnson was one of my colleagues, we voted to implement a new program to go get those absconders. And what the study says, what the article says, is John Cruzeau and his colleagues who oversee the probation department. Her ads have turned that into that I personally had control of the probation department, which is illegal. And one thing and, the ad says, too, Judge, is, is specifically about an individual who got out and went and uh, uh, killed a police officer. Yes. So I looked that up. Guess what? Not in my court. So none of this is correct. None of it is true. It's all just fake news. Well, let me ask you about, uh, interesting you throw fake news in there as well, too. Uh, Faith Johnson, you know, she got a conviction on Roy Oliver, the Balch Springs police officer sure. who shot and killed the unarmed black teenager. She's prosecuting the Dallas officer for killing uh, Botham Jean in his own apartment over there on Southside Place. Where do you see that she's vulnerable? Well, what I think is that she's trying to hide the fact that she's a Republican. And what she's done is created um, uh, banners around the county. And in the southern sector of the county, they have her picture. And everywhere else, they do not. 
And that's obviously trying to uh, not let the voters know who she is and what party she affiliates herself with, number one. But number two, I think the fact that we are focused in our campaign on positive message of criminal justice reform. As you know, I have a long history of criminal justice reform. I was the first judge in the state of Texas to tackle this issue of mass incarceration. And we had phenomenal results. We reduced crime, we saved money, we did it with low level offenders, we did it with high level, with high risk offenders, and we, we had great results. In 2005, the Texas legislature realized that in, in addition to 150,000 bids, we needed another 17,000, and that was unsustainable. So what worked to reduce that population, or what could they do? They looked back to the programs, and the philosophical underpinning of those programs became the beginning of the ending of mass incarceration by closing eight prisons in the state of Texas. So that's what I bring to this on a positive message as to what I can do and what my focus is as a national expert on criminal justice reform to this office. John, you know, when the district attorney took over, she had to pull an office out of the ditch and stabilize it. Yes. Has she not done that? I think so, yes. I will give her credit for that. I certainly will. And I, I'd like to know, I, I know that she's discussed uh, forcing gun surrender for suspects who are uh, out on bond on, on uh, d domestic violence suspects yes. in, in those cases. What's your position on Act that? Actually, that is not her position. Judge Rob Conyus was started the first it. one to start it. So she she's, has a program. She's, she has a program. She's taken up where he started. Right. How do you and feel about gun surrender, for, gun surrender for people who have not yet been adjudicated? It's an absolute must. In fact, it's the law. It's, this is not a discretionary program. Okay, it's not something that someone decided, I think it's a good idea to do. It's been written into the law, but it's been unenforced. And so what Judge Rob Conyers did a couple of years ago was develop the program. And so the rest of everybody else are following his lead. Judge, this is all about the Southern sector, keeping voters down there in that Democratic stronghold from voting for Faith Johnson. How close do you expect this race to be November the 6th? You know, I really don't know. And let's be honest, this time in 2016, Nobody had any idea that uh, Trump would be in the White House, okay? So all these numbers and polls and this, that, and the other, the only thing I know to do is to keep working hard, keep knocking on doors. I've knocked on well over 3,000 doors during this campaign. All in and, the southern sector? Uh, the vast majority, not necessarily all. There have been a few days where I've been somewhere else because we've done it as a group. But the vast majority of my door knocking has been in the southern sector and talking to citizens who vote about their concerns about the criminal justice system and what they want to see. Do you Judge, think you're winning? If so, why? I don't know if I'm winning. So I'm going to act as though I'm not. I can tell you that. We're going to keep working. Are you seeing Democratic voters in the southern sector shift over to your opponent? Uh, not from what I've seen knocking on the doors, but that's anecdotal, not empirical. And then the final question, 30 seconds left here, too. You were both judges for years, you and Faith Johnson. Biggest difference between you two, what is it? Oh, I think that I'm focused on ending mass incarceration, and I think that uh, I have the experience to deal with crime reduction and taxpayer, saver, taxpayer dollar savings. All of my programs have recognized that, have been recognized for doing that, and I've got a record that I'm going to bring to this office, and we're going to bring new, innovative ideas, things that she's had two years to do and hasn't done. And we're looking forward to getting in and, and really changing the tone and the direction of criminal justice in Dallas County. Sounds good. John Cruzo, the Democrat for District Attorney in Dallas County, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. As we switch out the candidates, a quick note about early voting. This is the final week you can cast a ballot early. Polls remain open all week. They're open even today, but Monday through Friday, they're open 7 to 7. Last day to early vote is Friday, November the 2nd. Now to the Republican incumbent, Faith Johnson. Governor Abbott appointed her to the job in 2016. She took office in 2017. She is now running for her first full term. Good morning to you, Faith. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks Good for morning. coming on. Let's start with the attack ad we've seen on the airwaves lately. We just talked to your opponent who said the, the attack ad is misleading. It's wrong that he never ran the probation department and the uh, individual highlighted in there was not even, didn't even come out of his court. Yeah. How do you respond to that? Uh, we have the Dallas Morning News uh, article that was, uh, uh, out in 2005 and 2007. He was a presiding judge. 
the judges oversee the probation department, so as a presiding judge, he did. So go back to that article, and they attempted to try to talk to him about it, so it is correct. And, and you, you mentioned judges. He mentioned the word judges also plural as well, too. Yeah. Is, is it fair to pin that on him since he's all the judges? He's a presiding judge. He's, so he's as a presiding judge. Yeah, he's a presiding judge. But let's shift off to the, uh, the, the news we've seen in the past six months or so. You got a lot of public support after the conviction, murder conviction of Roy Oliver, the Balch Springs officer who shot and killed the unarmed black teenager. You were on the defense, though, during the Botham Jean uh, case after the, you know, the white officer went into his apartment and shot and killed him. How much does that investigation hurt your campaign? I don't think it did. If you remember, the mother came out. We sat down with her for three hours and, and literally laid the case out for her, and she was so pleased with the work we've done. We've already interviewed over 200 witnesses. We still got uh, different forensic uh, evidence that we're trying to collect. She was very pleased, and I don't know if you remember when she came on TV and said, hey, I trust DA Johnson. I'm satisfied with, this, with the investigation, and I trust her decision in terms of when this thing goes to the grand jury. So I think she's the most important person in this case. Keep in mind, and me as your DA, I'm committed to equal justice, I'm committed to balance, I'm committed to making certain that justice is done for everybody, it doesn't matter who you are. Black, white, purple, green, rich, poor, young, old, that's my commitment. And so she felt very comfortable about what I'm doing on that case. And as far as that case goes, when do you expect prosecutors might present that to the grand jury? We've, this year or next year or what? It should be this year. We're still collecting uh, evidence and because we want to be able to present everything that we have to the grand jury. We don't want to leave anything out. Uh, and I explained that to the mom, and the mom, and I gave her the option. I said, look, these are the things we got left to do. And what has happened throughout the, the country, yeah. DAs have presented evidence to the grand jury, sloppily did something, presented it to the grand jury, and they've come back with a no bill. If you look at Dallas County, we have been very committed to making certain that justice is done in this county. And we have done this in a phenomenal way. And when you compare us with other counties throughout the country, we are number one in terms of making certain that bad officers get prosecuted. Remember, we support officers. We love officers. Ninety-nine percent of these officers do a great job. But I will not tolerate a bad officer, and, and we've proven that. And, and last quick question on that case. I want to talk politics in the last moments here too. But on that case, will you guys pursue a manslaughter charge? What the Rangers uh, suggested, or we're going to something higher than we're, that? We're going to present the evidence in the law to the grand jury, and, and the grand jury, grand jury okay. is going to know exactly what to do. You know, this is a very local race in a very national year. How do you respond when someone says, "Do you support President"? Trump. I say to people, it's, it's amazing. We, I have over 100,000 prayer warriors, and we, we pray often. And we, one of the lines we have, we said, this is not that. My position as a, the Dallas County District Attorney is to make certain that justice is done for everybody. What happens locally has nothing to do, I mean, nationally has nothing to do with what we're doing locally. We are serving the people of Dallas County. We uh, look at what I've done. I mean, I came in there, brought the morale up in the Dallas County DA's office. We got a strong conviction integrity unit. We've expanded that unit. We have prosecuted uh, police officers who shot unarmed citizens. We've expanded our, uh, we've started our uh, 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 satellite offices and people don't have to come down to the Frank Crowley's court building to be serviced. We have 16 satellite offices. I've done my function expo where we have cleared records of almost 400 individuals in the last two years. So when you look at what we're doing, there's no way that people can say that we are performing for the people. It is about the people. And when you look at it, People can see my performance. It's not about promises, as my opponent says. He's promising things. You don't have to ask me about what I promised to do. I went in there with a plan. I had my plan ready in 30 days, and I implemented that plan, and we have literally done more than any DA's office in a long, long time. Faith, you have clearly provided stability to the office, which hadn't had it in years, too. Early voting, though, underway right now. It's high. Democrats have huge turnout, at least in Dallas County. Final seconds. Do you think that uh, this is going to be a close race, long night? I, it very well may be a little close, but we are making headways. <clears throat> a little uh, close. It, you sound confident. It, yeah, it may be a little close, but we're making headways in, in, in the right. South and all over. And we have people come up right. to me all the time and they say, hey, you're a Republican. 
And well, I've never voted one for a Republican in my life. You're going to be the first one I vote for. Faith, good luck to you. She is the Republican running for her first full term as district attorney. Faith Johnson, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very you. much. We'll be right back. Liberal Colin Allred. He's all in on government-run health care and all wrong about gambling away your tax dollars to pay for it. But that's not all. Colin Allred is also upping the ante on a college tuition scheme which could cost taxpayers billions. Government-run health care, billions in spending, higher taxes. Liberal Colin Allred thinks it's all right. And that's why he's all wrong for Texas. America First Action is responsible for the content of this advertising. Nebraska Furniture Mart. Shop our huge selection and save up to 65% off suggested retail on qualifying Cerna, Sealy, and Beautyrest mattresses. Get free in-home delivery on mattresses $4.99 or more. And shop with long-term financing. No down payment required. Now is your chance to combine huge deals. 65% off in-home delivery and long-term mattress financing at Nebraska Furniture Mart. Hi. Hi. You're picking up your SUV, right? Yes. Well, we not only fixed the dents, but we added a few things. Built-in 4G LTE Wi-Fi, Apple CarPlay compatibility, and a 7-inch diagonal touchscreen. We also painted it. Whoa. This is a dark car. It's a Chevy. You're right. This is the Chevy Equinox. All those features come standard. It's pretty much everything. Mine's not. What more could you want? Get 13% below MSRP on all 2019 Chevy Equinox LT models, or 16% below MSRP when you finance with GM Financial. That's over $4,800 on this Equinox. No one takes better care of their clients than we do. Churchill was able to speed up the process and get an amazing rate that I couldn't get at any of their competitors. In a process that can be as complicated as home buying, it's really priceless to have such knowledgeable and patient people at your fingertips. When purchasing a home, you need the lowest rate available, ability to close early, with proactive communication through the process from a real local professional. Work with the best. Call Churchill Mortgage today. You'll be glad you did. What our friends think we do. What our parents think we do. What we actually do. At Parker University, we put you in a position to have higher purpose. Nancy Pelosi wants back in charge. Her agenda? Forcing your family into government-run health care. Single payer. Well, I want a really single struggling. payer. I mean, I wanted a, uh, I don't love a single payer, but... Guess who else wants government-run health care? Colin Allred. I would support, uh, you know, a super system. Colin Allred and Pelosi would kick you off your good employer health care. They'd make your private insurance illegal. Colin Allred is all wrong for Texas. I'm Pete Sessions, and I approve this message. Thank you for watching this morning. ABC's This Week begins in just a moment. Hope you have a good week.